Every year we set aside a sun, some Sundays just to say thank you to the Lord. So on this, uh, this Sunday, we are saying thank you to the Lord. And I want to, sh to suggest five reasons for gratitude. Lord, we thank you for that there's so much to thank you for. Help us to come to you with gratitude. Teach us, uh, as we listen to your word, to be more grateful for all that you are and all that you do in our lives. In December 2020, I was asked to speak to families who had children with mental and physical limitations, which we call special needs in, uh, in today's language. The majority of these people were stuck in wheelchairs. Others uh, were brought into the meeting room uh, on their beds. Others moved on crutches. As I observed this audience struggling with the basics of life, I thought to myself, I have so much to thank God for. You see, some of these individuals were people who used to run uh, and command their circles of influence, who are now dependent on or in almost every way. As I observed their needs, I thought to myself, their needs for physical well-being have parallels for our needs for spiritual well-being. Today, I want to remind you of five things that are critical for every person, whether they are a person with special needs or whether they are, they, they are not. These five things are reasons for being thankful to come to God with gratitude for what he is and what he has done. First of all, one of the needs of people with special needs is accessibility. Uh, one of the common challenges people with special needs have is accessing places. You often need a wheelchair or an automatic door to get into, into a place. Customers, uh, customer friendly places think of people with special needs when they are designing access. People tend to rule out going to certain places because of accessibility. Just as access is a basic need uh, to, uh, which can become an extreme challenge for a person with special needs, access to God is a basic need for every human being without which life loses its purpose and it loses its eternal perspective. The loneliness of abandonment by God uh, uh, because of our sin persists not just in this life but also into eternity. The good news that is in Christ we have access to God. The Apostle Paul says in Romans 5, 1 to 5, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that our suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit it, whom he has given us. You see, if your body still takes you wherever you want to go, you can connect with whoever you want to connect with without needing special vehicles, chairs, doors, or whatever. You should be thankful that you have access. You are able to get to places. But an even greater reason for being thankful to God is if you have made that connection with God, you have relationship with God, you have access to God, you are able to talk to God, you should be thankful. I found that this is a privilege for me to be able to talk to God directly. I don't need no intermediaries. I have access to, to God. And because I have access to God, it's really something to be thankful for. Gratitude for access to God. Second, a meaningful life. Every normal human being wants to have a life that counts for something. Unfortunately, the world cannot feel that deep longing in every human heart. It is, the, it is find, the finding of the meaning of life that separates one person from another. For, for instance, one person lying in a bed with a helpless body can thrive and influence their world and another with the same limitation can live a totally dysfunctional life. Jesus, in John 10.10, 10, says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Life in its fullness is found in Christ alone. One of the people who comes to mind in, as I think about this, is Mastula. Mastula was a friend of mine in the, nine, in the 80s who used to make fun of me for being saved. She made it clear that any time I wanted to have sex with her, I just needed to name, needed, name the place and the time. At that point, Jesus Christ had already invaded my life and had redef had re he had redefined my relationships, so I consistently declined the offer. At some point, Mastula contracted HIV and began to get very sick with AIDS. She was taken to Malago Hospital. I went to visit her and I left her with a New Testament. She was so angry with me for giving her a New Testament and looked at me with disgust. I went away for, for several weeks to Nairobi 
when I came back, Mastula had been uh, uh, taken away from hospital, back to the village to die, as it tended to, be, to happen in those days. When I, uh, I, so I, I decided to go to the village to see Mastula. When I got there, she was a very dif different person. She was not the angry Mastula I had left uh, in the hospital three weeks before. Although she was visibly in a lot of pain, she was very pleasant. While I was away, she had made peace with God. She had read the Bible, had accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, and had, God had given her assurance in her heart, and she was full of joy. She was now a witness to her rough Muslim family. She was in pain, but her life had found meaning in her new relationship with Christ. A new mission to share that hope with her Muslim family. She had found meaning. Really, uh, for meaningful life, we should be thankful. If you have come to Christ, one of the things you experience is that life begins to take, to take on a new meaning. And for that, we should be thankful. The third thing we should be thankful for is a voice. Everyone desires, desires to be heard. Uh, the key need for people with the special needs is, is to be heard. This basic need is our need as well. The psalmist in Psalm 66 verse 16 to 20 tells us that we do have this uh, privilege uh, in, in God. Come and hear you all who fear God. Let me tell you what it has done for me. I cried, to, uh, cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. I had cherished, if I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would have not listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise to be, be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld it, uh, his love from me. You see, the psalmist acknowledges that God has an open heart for him. God is listening to him. And God has an open ear for you and for me. He's willing to listen to our concerns. He's willing to hear our prayers. If you're going through that kind of season of tough, a tough life, it, you need to look to God because he will hear your voice. Every child of God has this privilege of a God who hears them. You have a voice uh, in the presence of God. For that, I am thankful. The third reason to be thankful is that you, in, in, in Christ you are loved. Many of us are blessed with great friends and family who love us, who inspire us, who care for us, who accept us unconditionally. To love and to be loved is a basic need whether you have special needs or not. God has met this provision. We no longer, uh, when we are no longer a source of benefit to others, a number of people who show, who show us that they care for us tend to dwindle. But guess what? God's love stays whether we're doing well or not. It never fades away. John marvels at the love of God in, in John 3 when he says how great, the love of the, how great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. I know that many people go through a season when they face this abandonment. You can have people coming to you for care when they are getting something from you. When they're getting nothing, nothing from you, they may leave you. But you, you know that God never leaves you. He loves you and cares for you and will not abandon you. The last need that we all have is sensitivity. There's a common phrase that says what, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. While we can learn from our mistakes or challenges, no one should feel, should have to, to feel grateful for bad behavior as a path for becoming a stronger person. Teachable moments should, should not have to arise from insensitivity. We must be sensitive to the needs of others. People with special needs are people to handle with sensitivity. Many of these are people who used to run, who used to run the show. They are, and, and they, they used to, to tell everyone what they should do or what they shouldn't do. And then illness downsizes them. They become a people who need a lot of help. These people tend to be sensitive. But guess what? Not just people with special needs. Everyone needs sensitivity. I like the words of the Apostle Paul when he says, For you know, we acted towards every one of you as a father does towards his children, encouraging and cheering you and imploring you to live lives worthy of, the, of fellowship with God, who is inviting you to share his own kingship and glory. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11 to, to, to 12. These are words of a leader to his people that ring with sensitivity who cares about their feelings and their needs. And I know that God too feels the same way about you and I. He asked the people of Isaiah's day, can a woman forget her nursing child and have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even the, though these may forget you, but I will not forget you. You see, God is sensitive to your needs. He's aware of you. He will never forget you. This is a reason to be grateful to God. 
So today, I want to remind you to be thankful to God for many reasons, but for, for, for uh, uh, more than these, but at least for one, that you have access to God the Father. If you already have a relationship with God, be thankful for this privilege. It is not, you know, you can uh, have access to God as however ordinary you are through Christ. For that, you should be thankful. Two, God gives meaning to, to the believer's life. God can bring meaning in your life. And, 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 and so, be thankful for God who adds, brings meaning to your life. Three, be thankful for God who has given you a voice. You, he list, can listen to you anywhere, any day, any time. And four, you need to, to be thankful because you know that you are dearly loved by God. He gave his own son to die on the cross for you uh, and, and to, so that he can have a relationship for you. And like, lastly, God's love for you comes to you with affection. He's a God who is sensitive to your needs. So for that, you should be thankful. So this Sunday, I'd just like to encourage you to, be, to live your life with gratitude because God is a God who cares for you.